depressing. Hong Kong. Uh, well, this particular thing was was actually not that depressing. Like it's, it's we we had an amazing time. Uh, how many years ago was it now? Seven. Seven years ago, when we were in Hong Kong for the Umbrella Revolution or the Umbrella Movement. I don't think that was ever settled. What uh, people preferred to call it. Occupy Central. Talking <laughs> that 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 didn't work. That was the interesting about it. Uh, there was like. Sort of like the older organizers who were trying to create this Occupy movement. Yeah, that was the the original idea. They had already planned to do this. It was called Occupy Central with Love and Peace or something like that movement to, uh, you know, occupy the central business district. Because Occupy Wall Street had been such a rousing success. Yeah. Well, but I mean, like, so the what happened is that the the Communist Party had basically promised Hong Kongers that by a certain year, and I think it was 2017, they were going to get the right to directly if elect they, they the chief executive. They kept moving it back. They moved it back, and then they basically canceled it. And then Hong Kongers protested, and then- Well, wasn't it that in 2014, they said, okay, we'll let you choose between the three candidates we select. Right, that was it, that it was essentially going to be kind of like what they do with the People's Congresses, where they're like, you can pick- but we have picked the people who you're allowed to pick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, the initially there was like this Occupy Central with peace and love idea. But then basically the young people of Hong Kong just kind of took it over, did their own thing, and it became something completely different. Essentially, they had to – the there were students, like high school and college age students who started protesting in late September, and it got to the point where – the police tear gassed people. Which was unheard of in Hong Kong. Right. And at in 2014, <laughs> it was a time. unheard of in Hong Kong. So end of to September, pe- police tear gassed a group of protesters, many of whom were high school students. People were enraged and took to the streets and estimates of like eighty to 100,000 people in Hong Kong taking to the streets, which is also... Fairly unprecedented. There had only been one major protest under CCP rule in 2003 that had about half a million people come out. Mm. So against Article 23. So that was the only previous big protest. So this was, you know, 100,000 people came out on the streets enraged about the fact that the police had fired 87 tear gas uh, grenades. And then hey. I know, like looking back at that, right? That's wow. like how many how many they did in half an hour by the yeah. end of twenty nineteen. But that was the tipping point where after the, all those people came out on the street, people kind of stayed, and so the Occupy Central people essentially were like, "All right, we're doing this now." Yeah, and we and we we were there. We we actually spent a night in uh, one of the tents. It was very rainy that was, night. Yeah, sleeping in a tent in a wet. A wet tent in a suit was not fun. Yeah, on on concrete, because we were on a freeway. We truly suffered more than anyone else. Are we not heroes? <laughs> <laughs> or are we dancers? Is that? Please tell me that's a quote from something. It's a song. Well, it's are we human or are we dancers? Okay. Actually, I do remember very clearly getting the phone call from Alan, who was like, you guys should go to Hong Kong. And yeah. then being like, that's what? Because this was about two years into the show. We had never really traveled anywhere. And I hadn't been working on it for two years. I think I had only started helping you out in like 2013. Yeah, yeah. And Matt had not really been involved by that point. Right. That was um, the first time Matt was involved because you came as the field producer. Yep. And Alan, who suggested this trip, came as our camera guy. And I remember paying for my own ticket. To Hong Kong, like this was very bootstrap. We had no money. Yeah, we had sixty six thousand subscribers. This just seemed like a wild idea. But do you remember going to dim sum in Flushing with Alan? Yeah, and Matt. Yeah, Yeah, and we kind of came up with a training montage. We came up with the idea to do it. Uh huh. And then we were on a flight a week later. But in between. We filmed a training montage of you too that we could not do now because we used the Wong Fei Hong music. Oh, and that probably be flagged. That or would copyrighted. totally be flagged now. But we used the Nair Dang Zichang music to have you know you as if you were training to Hong for Hong Kong. Yeah, and then we 
we filmed part of it on the plane to Hong Kong too. Remember this? Yeah. And then we had basically held it because we didn't want to tell anybody we were going just in case for some right, reason. Right, yeah. Yeah. And then we published it when we landed. It was a crazy, it was pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was amazing to, for the first time, really get out of the studio and, you know, see really kind of like the front line of people fighting against the Chinese Communist Party. And it was a very different experience than in 2019. Yes. Yeah. And it, the whole love and peace thing, it was very much this like kind of, it actually did, the energy reminded me of the earliest days of Occupy Wall Street. I didn't see a single person with a crystal in Occupy Sun. Oh. It, there, there's a certain energy of this like youthful, hopeful kind of, you know, we're all in this together kind of feeling. And I like- it deteriorated much more quickly in Occupy uh, Wall Street. Yes, it did. It deteriorated very quickly in Occupy Wall Street. But I, but I remember, I remember the feeling it's, and it's, and it's kind of hard to describe. It, it, it also in a weird way reminds me of, I was just finished reading um, George Orwell's homage to Catalonia. And when he first went to, to fight, like all of the soldiers had this, like this spirit of this is like- his memoir of fighting in the Spanish, in the Spanish Civil, Civil War. War. So this yeah. was early 30, 1937. Like just this kind of spirit of camaraderie and like we're all, you know, in this together. Like a lot of like foreign volunteers came to fight in this war, to fight against fascism. And it, it even reminds me of, you know, the stories I've heard about the, the early days of the Tiananmen Square protests, which lasted for, you know, over a month before the no, crackdown happened. Two, yeah. I mean, it was um, almost two months. Yeah. yeah. And so like there's just this 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 energy, this vitality, this love this camaraderie uh, and the spirit of like, we can do this standing up to this authoritarian, this this fascism, this like, you know, evil bully. Uh, and it was a, it was a really interesting and, and, and heartwarming uh, place to be. I mean, I think we really genuinely kind of fell in love with the spirit of the Hong Kong people. Yeah, I which mean, is, I mean, it was, it was, that's why I was very sad when, after the what eighty nine days that it lasted so 79? 79, 79 or eighty nine, the you know the bulldozers came through and demolished everything. Mm -hmm. But there was yeah there was a spirit of you know wanting to protect the students first of all that I think was very mm -hmm. because we talked to a lot of people who were like you know I'm really the Hong Kong students they're our future we're here to protect the students that was very reminiscent of Tiananmen Square. Yeah, actually, because the students started protesting and then people started coming out to support the students. Right. Right. And then also people, you know, the first video we made, right, of uh, the dangerous weapons of the Hong Kong protesters, which was essentially oh, about yeah. people building chairs and benches so the students could do their homework. Uh, you, you might be protesting against an authoritarian regime, but you got to get your math done, you know. Uh, I believe it's called maths in Hong Kong. Probably. They're um, wrong about that, though. But anyway, go on. Uh, I mean, anyway. I totally derailed you. I Yes, because now I'm thinking about the trash cans that say come on them. Yes, that is that was a weird thing. Yeah. Hong Kong has a lot of cum dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Are we allowed to say that? It's technically true. They have a lot of trash cans that say things like trash cum recycling, like C-U-M, because it's an old... You know, it's yeah. an English term that nobody uses anymore to say and or with. Yeah, so, it does not mean come like, come here. No, yes, right. it doesn't or mean Or any that. other meaning, yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> I was talking about the beautiful spirit of the Hong Kong people. Uh, but in a way, this makes sense because the other thing I was going to talk about is their sense of humor. Yeah. Remember going to the Hong Kong protest site and... They had stolen the police barriers, essentially, and lashed them together to protect the site. And then they had put a bunch of photos of Xi Jinping holding an umbrella. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Illustrations, uh, like cartoon uh, versions of Xi Jinping uh, holding a yellow umbrella. Yeah, I remember taking a photo standing next to like one of the big Xi Jinping cutouts. Yeah, they with, like had, Xi Jinping holding an umbrella. Right. Mm -hmm. So they had taken a photo of Xi Jinping holding an umbrella, which had made a big splash at the time because he was holding his own umbrella and not having some lackey hold his umbrella for him. 
Uh, and they man had, of the people. Yeah, and they'd basically, you know, Photoshop them really yellow, and then that was all over the place. But one of the protesters explained to us that, you know, the police can't really tear down the barricades that have Xi Jinping holding an umbrella. Because then they'd them. have to tear down images of Xi Jinping. Yeah. yeah. So it was just an example of just the type of uh, sense of humor and, you know, the Lenin walls that had all those post-it notes. Yeah. With people having messages of support and all this different art up that was very, didn't you, wasn't there some from that anime Death Note or something where somebody... <laughs> I vaguely remember something having to do with Death Note. It was like they had um, Communist Party official name in, in, in the book. In the book, uh, Death Note was a uh, anime about simply a book, a Death Note that if you wrote somebody's name in it, they would die. Sounds really cheerful. It it was it was not a cheerful no. show. But, Very good though. But you know, just lots of like cultural pop cultural references and just funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people remember the Mr. and Miss little characters because I think that was mostly a British thing, but they were very popular in Hong Kong. Hmm. So they had like little Mr. Protester or mm -hmm. little Miss, you know, like as the protesters. Yeah. And I remember that's where we first met Joe Feng Suo, uh, Tiananmen Square massacre survivor. Yes. And he talked a lot about how it reminded him of Tiananmen Square. Yeah. Uh, and uh, now Joe Feng Suo has blocked from ever going back to Hong Kong. As is, are we. Well, we haven't been officially blocked. Joe tried to get in and they refused him at the border. Uh, Which is fortunate for him in a way. Yeah. Yeah, he tried to go in 2019. Oh, okay. That would have been, okay. When we right. were there. So this was before the national security Yeah, this was, law. this was right in that first few weeks after the for one million person protest had happened and we had traveled to Hong Kong immediately. Essentially, this is in 2019. In 2019. And then Joe had tried to go to Hong Kong and then they blocked him. Yeah. Because uh, I remember texting with him essentially <laughs> and mm -hmm. it was the middle of night in Hong Kong. And right. No, he was like, I wish I could be there now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I love Hong Kong. It was an amazing city. Sadly, I think I do have to say it was. An amazing city it's, as it's, it's being changed a lot. I mean, choked to death. 